Uncle Helen. What is possibly wrong with an ad like that? Certainly. No, I think it's offensive, and I think most women would find it offensive. It told Maybe me a lot about a lot the product. Would, it too. told me that the peri mineral water is a well, it's, it's great for ejaculatory purposes. It's refreshing. It's new. It's, it's just water, isn't it? True. It's just it? water <laughs> with supposedly some minerals mm. um, in it, and they're making such a song and dance about it. Yes. And, and I mean, that's a very good example of of how um, image sells a product or is supposed to sell a product. Possibly it does. I mean, it'd be interesting to know what people's reactions were to that if mm. you carried out a, a survey asking all the fair questions. But uh, I think, I think you know, quite objectionable and, and absolutely absurd. Mm. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's a staple of the advertising industry. Mm. Do, do you think it's possible then for ads to actually create a need for something that perhaps isn't necessary? I think ads are creating needs all the time. Now, again, the advertising people will say that's not true. But you can see it um, in, in many products. I mean, uh, foot um, deodorizers, shoe deodorizers is one example. Vaginal deodorants is another. Mm. A lot of people would say that there's um, not so much need for cosmetics and, and clothing in the community. Why don't we just wear? So, I mean, it just depends on, on, the, on the individual. But there are certainly certain products that are unnecessary, that, don't re that we don't really have a need for. Mm. If you have to have a, think you have to have a vaginal deodorant, the re I don't. Really, <laughs> you don't. Well, the best thing is to go to a, go to a doctor if if your feet are, are smelly. Mm. Maybe you need to look at your shoes and um, and uh, wear a different pair of shoes each day if that's possible. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that. Or uh, go and see a good podiatrist. <laughs> well, thank you, Helen, for that very personal advice. I appreciate that. I I guess I know what you're talking about. I've got a set of, uh, well, frankly, totally useless cheese spanners at home. <laughs> and, which I bought because they just looked fabulous and I, I was very annoyed actually when I got them back because I realised there is actually no need for a cheese spanner in my life. I'm doing a program on useless products, Andrew, so that would be good. Well, you can have the whole show. <laughs> you can have a tape of this Locked entire show to use. I'll take it. So instance. who can people actually complain to if they want to complain? Well, people should complain if they feel an ad's misleading or false. They should complain to the Trade Practices Commission or the Department of Consumer Affairs in their state or Australian Consumers Association, Publishers of Choice magazine, or the investigators. All right, but what we should do for all those bodies is come up with a really slick ad which involves semi-naked women, lots of people drinking on boats and cars, and uh, a really stirring anthem with Australian flags, and we're bound to increase their public profile. <laughs> Helen Wellings, you've interrupted the entire show. I don't blame you for it. You rate much higher than we do, and one has to respect that in the ABC. But for now, I'm going to bugger off. Thank you. Crisps, taking the world by storm. Jason, Jason keeps you regular. Jason is true. Nothing artificial, guaranteed fat free. You deserve a Jason. Is Jason's made for you? Ah, oh, Jason. Jason, what a guy! Despite some objections, there's little doubt that today. Advertising is one of the most exciting and socially beneficial industries in the entire world. But if you think things are good now, imagine the future. One man who does almost all the time is advertising trends analyst, George Dodd. George, welcome. Andrew. Hi. Thank you. I hate Japanese restaurants. I'm sorry about this. Well, George, the future of advertising, what can we expect? Oh, better use of space, I think, Andrew. I mean, in every developed country of the world, there are millions upon millions of traffic lights. They're wasted space. I think in the next few years, we can, well, see them going from red, amber, green to sort of Coke, Fanta, Sprite, that sort of thing. Well, we also have acres, millions of acres of road dividers. You know those things in the middle of the road? Yes. Blank concrete. I mean, why aren't there ads there? It should have happened before now, and I think in the next few years, it will happen. Hmm, interesting concept. Hmm. I know you believe that books are an untapped market. Oh, look, there are acres of books, darling. They just, they just go everywhere. I've read them from Socrates to Solzhenitsyn. I can't find an advertising reference in any of them, and it's about time that changed, and it, it, is, it is changing. So uh, I can see books being slightly rewritten, you know, nothing that's going to compromise the artistic integrity or anything, sure. but just enough to get a message across. I mean, uh, 
the Bible. The Bible. I've read the whole Bible. I can't find an advertising reference in the whole thing. Oh, hang on. No, no, no. There's, there's sort of an ad for salt in Sodom and Gomorrah, isn't there? Very negative vibe. I mean, negative is a no in advertising, Andrew. Sure, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, the sort of thing we're looking at is, say, uh, well, just off the top of my head, how about uh, Eve tempting Adam with her Apple computer? That's good. That's very good. I'm it's very... also a bit easy. So, so give me another book. Oh, um... Moby Dick. Oh, Moby Dick, okay. Captain Ahab launches his harpoon at the whale, turns to the first mate and says, hand me a coke, you salty sea dog. Artistic integrity intact, but a nice little advertising message in there. I think it's super. I think mm. it says yes. It, it's very exciting. I mean, not just saying it seems that you know, every possible area could bear fruit as far as advertising is concerned. Mm. You know, I could see a time where, say, uh, well, funerals are used for advertising. No, I don't think so. I think that's rather tasteless. <laughs> I don't know anyone in advertising who'd be involved in anything like that, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Well, <coughs> cigarette advertising. Now, now mm. that's been a very contentious issue for the industry, hasn't it, for the advertising industry? It has. Obviously, most of the world now is against cigarette smoking. Oh, it is. They put tobacco on the doorstep and the cat wouldn't touch it. So, I mean, advertisers want to be on the winning side. So, of course, we've gone over to the anti-smoking lobby. And the first thing we're going for, Andrew, is the health warnings on the packet. No one reads them. Why? They're boring. They're boring. They've got to say something new. So we're going for the... We're grabbing people by the lungs. How does this sound? Just on the bottom of the pack, nice big colourful letters. Why do you want to die? Mm. Pretty good. It's yeah, pretty it's good. It's strong. It is strong. OK. It? Guilt. A byword in advertising. How about this? You're going to die anyway. How about taking a few passive smokers with you? Beautiful. Mm. From what you're saying, it seems that in the future there's no one and nothing that, that won't be usable for advertising. Not strictly true, not strictly true. I mean, it can be quantified. A person is only good for endorsement if they're uh, recognised by more than 100,000 people in any given demographic. It doesn't matter what they're recognised for. Oh, no, no, no. Fame, infamy, who cares? I mean, I can see a, a time in the future when perhaps mass murderers will be endorsing breakfast cereal. I mean, yeah. just as long as they're recognised. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and it goes beyond people. It goes to events, disasters. Everybody loves a good disaster. It says yes. Yes. So um, there will be a time, and it's happening now, when uh, disasters will be used to endorse products. Because they've got that huge audience, haven't absolutely. they? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you say it's happening now. It is happening now. I mean, we have to be we have to be careful. I mean, it's a very delicate area. We don't want to be associating all oh, the Scottish air disaster with Johnny Walker Scotch. Mm. I mean, it's just tacky. Tacky. Mm. So, um, well, the Americans do these things best, and I, I've actually brought along uh, an American ad that's running at the moment, getting uh, big news. So perhaps you'd like to take a look at it. Perhaps we would. Let's do it now. God, he's closer than you think. A message from the Christian Television Association of Nebraska. Mm, very interesting. I look forward to seeing some of those in Australia. Well, George Todd, thank you for being on The Money or the Gun. Excuse me while I wrap up with someone more interesting. Tarpon. Hi, Fief. How are you? Great to see you. I'm good, thank you. You know, George Orwell once described advertising as the rattling of a stick inside a school bucket. <sighs> But what would he know? He was just a commie. <laughs> oh, nice trick. Nice, great industry. Great industry. You know, tonight, Fifi, we've seen how advertising not only creates jobs and wealth and happiness, it somehow creates us. I mean, frankly, I take exception to that rattling of a stick inside a school bucket quote. Personally, I prefer to paraphrase that great Englishman, Sir Winston Churchill. Some swill bucket, some stick. Oh, that's just a special effect. I've seen it before. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Rory. There's a lady who sure all that glitters is gold And she's buying a stairway to heaven When she gets there she knows that the stores are all closed In a word she can get what she came for Ooh, 
And she's buying a stairway to heaven. There's a sign on the wall. No, 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 Ronnie, it's, it's very nice, it's very nice. But Rory, it's Rory. Yes, it's what we in the industry call retro shit. We're not looking retro, <laughs> we're looking retail. 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 Mm. Oh, sorry, Andrew. Uh, retail, right. There's a sign on the wall Cause she wants to be sure Cause she knows that the words have two meanings And she... Yeah. No, 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 oh, no sorry, But sorry. I think we're looking more punch, more punch. punch. Uh, that's a bit... Uh, punch! Wanky, yes, more punch. More punch. I've got one. This is Sill. Sill, okay, okay. Oh, excuse me, the phone. No, no, it's me. It's me. It works, it sells. A stairway to heaven. It's also fast, it's fast. Okay, um, I think Rory. Hmm? Rory. Yes. Sorry. I think what we really want here is more. You know, more mm, mm, mm. I know what you want. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I've got it, I've got it. Okay, here we go. And as we wind on down the road. Yes. Yeah. Our shadows taller than ourselves. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. Now look, you're what? trying hard, but it's yeah. not quite there. What I'm thinking of, what I'm thinking of is the Australian dream. I'm thinking Ben Lexon with a wing keel on his head rising from his rock. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it, Andrew. I've got it. I think there's we go. There's a lady who knows. Yeah. Well, that glitters as gold. I like it. She's buying a stairway to heaven. Yeah. Right there. Cause she's buying a stairway to heaven. She's buying a stairway to heaven, yeah. <laughs> buying a stairway to heaven. Good on you, yeah. Australia! Buying <laughs> that stairway to heaven. Good on you, Ronnie. Yes! Rory. Stairway to heaven, yeah. She's buying the stairway to heaven, yeah. Come on in! Buy the stairway to heaven. Everybody! by Jason, a superior human being, and by Hitler Crisps, makers of the new taste sensation, Luftwaffers. Hitler Crisps, tomorrow belongs to us.